Hey everyone, welcome back to the Speak Up Erica podcast. I'm your host Erica and this podcast talks about things that we're scared to talk about but should. Uh, I'm back with Dr. Joyce Fu. Hey Joyce. Hello, hi everyone. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Um, I'm so happy to have you on again and in this part two, Joyce and I are going to be doing um, well, Joyce will be leading a meditation session with us, which is really yes. exciting. Um, and then we're also going to talk about her expertise in yoga as a yoga instructor. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, I know, Joyce, you were telling me what day it is today as well. Yes. Yeah, so today is actually International Yoga Day, and it only happens once a year. So I'm super happy that we're also doing this podcast, um, just talking about yoga and the amazing benefits it has. Yeah, it's it's yeah. funny that I don't think we even planned to record on National nope. Yoga Day. Yep, so exactly. It's funny that it aligned. <laughs> like exactly. That. It would. It, it's like the universe, you know, planned for this right? to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome. I guess, could you also, before we start and get into our meditation and our conversation for today, to give a quick intro about yourself again? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Dr. Joyce Fu. I'm a chiropractor and acupuncture provider in Toronto. I practice in two clinics, plus I do home visits. Um, I also am a yoga teacher, and that's definitely part of my practice. I like to give yoga stretches to my patients and encourage them that uh, moving your body regularly and consistently um, is beneficial for overall well-being and health. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Joyce and I connected because I didn't have a lot of episodes kind of chatting about how physical health ties in with your mental health. And I mm -hmm. do talk a lot about mental health on the podcast. So I mm -hmm. thought it was a, a great connection to to chat more about that, yeah. especially from a doctor. like yeah. so cool. <laughs> Exactly. So it's yeah. basically, I like to say my dance experience of over 10 years and doing yoga a lot to mm -hmm. help um, figure out my body and what it needed. It uh, was so instrumental in, in how I understood so many things. Mm -hmm. I wanted other people to ed be educated and to understand their body that exact same way. Uh, because I know it can get really frustrating that when you go to, you know, your medical doctor or the specialists, they don't really have other answers for you. And there's always alternative types of treatment. And I just want to make sure, you know, people are aware that it exists out there. Yeah, of course. Hmm. Thanks, yeah. Joyce. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I guess, um, should we get started on our yeah, sure. meditations? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it'll be a short little sequence, nothing too crazy, but I wanted to give a sample of what it's like to get into meditation and what better way than to do it right now. So what we're going to do is you're going to inhale and shrug the shoulders up and exhale, dropping them away from the ears. Good. One more time. Inhale and shrug up. Exhale, bringing them down. Gently close your eyes. And just notice the sensation of your breath touching the tip of your nose. Maybe you notice your chest moving up and down. Maybe you'll notice your shoulders hiking up towards the ears and can you drop them further away from the ears? And so meditation is a great practice, especially before yoga, to bring awareness to your breath, bring awareness to the present moment and trying to clear your mind of all the to-do things you have to do, the things you have to do after class or the next day or the week, just focusing and embracing the present moment. And the more you do this, the easier it gets. So if you find your mind wandering, just allow it to do so, and then slowly come back to your breath, tracing it in and out to the nose. Meditation is also a great practice to remove your ego, remove any um, you know, insecurities you have, any negative thoughts that you have, or any judgment you have of yourself. Trying to come from a place that's neutral, that's calm, that's rational. And I want you to focus on your third eye center, the, so the area between your eyebrows. 
This is the area of intuition. And so the more you focus on it, the stronger it gets. And imagine when you're breathing in, that light kind of gets a little brighter. When you exhale, little parts of that light kind of spread all throughout your body. Just like a fire. And every time you inhale, there's oxygen, making the fire stronger. And exhale, allowing that energy to scatter. And then depending on the way you're sitting, maybe imagine from the tips of your fingers, there's these energy that kind of jumps out from the fingertips, from the toes. Allow your jaw to unhinge, shoulders to drop, and your neck to be reaching up towards the ceiling, sitting up a little taller in your chair. And from here, I'll invite you to set an intention for whatever type of energy you want to manifest. Notice what area of the body this intention is tied to. It could be in the forehead, center of the chest, in the throat, or deeper down in your sacral or root chakras. And then bringing your hands to heart center here. Let's take a deep inhale to seal our intention. Big sigh out through the mouth, exhale. And then placing our hands to throat eye center, tuck your chin down. One more inhale and out. And then slowly blink your eyes back open. And that will be our meditation for today. <laughs> so yeah. needed thank right? you guys. yeah oh, you're welcome. oh I needed that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looked like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's good uh, yeah was... just bringing your awareness inside your body is like so powerful so magical that we need to be more in touch with it that's what meditation ultimately does mm -hmm. yeah. and um for people who if that's like if this is like their first time doing yeah. meditation, do you have any beginner tips? Because I feel like when I started, it's like your mind is wandering all the time. Oh, 100%. Right? But, yep. Yeah. 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 And that was like for everyone who's ever done meditation, it's our natural tendency to like think of things, your brain to like pop up with notifications, right? In a way, yeah. um, especially now that we have more digital type of um, like phones, yeah. TV and stuff. But I would say to start small. So like just do it for like a couple minutes in the beginning. See if you can lengthen the amount of time that you're doing it after that. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely follow guided meditation. So, um, you know, Headspace, I know, is a good app for that. They also have a little um, expl explanation on it on Netflix. That's great. Yes. And then from so there, good. if you really, really do like it, I would say to read more about it. Oh. Um, yeah. And then that'll give you more insight of like what you're exactly trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. And it can mean different things each day you do it. So it doesn't, you know, there should be no actual rules of what type of meditation means mm -hmm. um, because different every day is a little bit different and you might need different things. Mm -hmm. Do you have a book recommendation? by the way that's a great question I don't <laughs> because my books were from yoga teacher training so I see yeah. yeah so those are fundamental but I'm pretty sure I do have some books I could recommend I just have to look into it <laughs> okay I'll put those in the podcast notes sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome um I guess since in the previous episode so if yeah. anyone missed out and you're listening to this now the episode that uh, Joyce and I did before this, you can check it out from last week. And it was about um, Cairo and, and mm -hmm. all about chiro chiropractor. You got Chir it. Chiropractor. Yeah. Okay. Chiropractic. Yeah. Chiropractic. Yeah. So how did you get into the yoga side and yeah, deciding to be a sure. yoga teacher? Yeah, yeah. So that all began before chiropractic. Um, that yeah was more in my life uh, when I was dancing professionally. Right. Um, and then I, I found that dancing was great, but it was also really, really hard on the body. And if you understand yin and yang, 
it's like a balance, right? So with the dancing, it was very yang. It was very like extroverted output. Um, yeah, and I felt inside, deep inside, it was like almost like a little empty and I couldn't mm -hmm. find that inspiration to create, to dance, to move anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when the internal work of yoga was like really prominent in my life. Mm -hmm. And I started going more often. I really liked, you know, certain teachers and, you know, how they guided class and stuff. And I really was interested to learn more about it. And I heard teacher training was actually great, even if you don't want to be a teacher, to just learn about it and to understand what it means. So that's when I went into yoga teacher training and I did it at Downward Dog in Toronto. Oh. At the time it was, yeah, at the time it was um, the first level is 200 hours mm -hmm. and so we would do like intense weekends of like I don't know 16 hour trainings plus attending regular class plus teaching class oh, at their wow. studio yeah so it was a really thorough program yeah <laughs> and I would say our teachers there were phenomenal they were they had learned and taught in India as well so mm -hmm. had a lot of insight of what yoga is like in India which is where it came from um, and then there's like the westernized version of yoga that we're mostly exposed to now as well but I do feel I do feel that my education was more rooted in the traditions which is what I enjoyed yeah, yeah. so from that that's when I um, grew more interested in the body and trying to find ways to um, extend not extend my life, but like extend um, my experience of living in my body, right? Because mm. dance was only kind of like, I don't know, I can't really see me dancing professionally until I'm 40. I mean, that's a dream, but yeah. it's hard. It's hard work. Like you have to maintain your body. It's just like a, a sport, like any other sport, Olympic athlete, right? They have to do, yeah. you know, a certain regimen for eating, of drinking, they probably are not drinking alcohol at all, you know, all these things. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what, I want to still be old and dancing or doing yoga, doing whatever I want to at that time. Right. So that's when I got interested in chiropractic because there's this whole wellness side to it that no other um, profession really talks about. Mm -hmm. Like medicine, definitely not. <laughs> um, maybe a little bit of naturopathic medicine and acupuncture, but I found the best fit was with chiropractic. Mm -hmm. um, because I am very hands-on as well and I do understand the importance of touch so that's mm -hmm. kind of where my world's met um, but still nowadays I'm still very rooted in my yoga practice and I think everyone should you know try it at least once to see if it works for them or if not then you know find someone who inspires them or um, yeah that kind of thing yeah oh that's yeah. awesome thanks for sharing your story Joyce <laughs> you're welcome I, I had like two questions that kind of popped yeah. up um my my first question mm. is um I know you you have your virtual yoga classes that you do and I have yeah. attended them they're yes. so good um so what <laughs> what kind of gave you that idea of pivoting and doing virtual yoga classes um I mean first of all it was COVID yeah <laughs> and uh there is part of me like the, in the beginning I didn't teach um because I was waiting for my actual studio in Markham to open up again and yeah. you know hopefully go back in and teach but before that I had been teaching regularly for like two years every week on Wednesday like it was my time slot and so after a break after a certain time of of not teaching I was like you know I really want to still teach like it's still something I truly enjoy not just for saying you know oh I still teach but it's like I actually truly enjoy telling and guiding people through yoga poses um mm -hmm. so that's when I was like you know I can just do this on my own thing and just start start teaching casually virtually for whoever's interested yeah. and I mean luckily now it's like you know we're kind of growing a, a mini community on its own mm -hmm. which is great yeah and uh hopefully we can flip that to outdoor kind of yoga or yeah. we'll see yeah yeah how um I mean there must have been some struggles like transitioning mm -hmm. virtually could you yeah hear more about that if that's oh my gosh yeah, yeah for <laughs> sure <good> know. <laughs> <laughs> well first of all I usually like to play music when I teach because mm -hmm. uh, I am a dancer. I love music. It creates a certain mo um, momentum and energy in class I really like and I vibe off of. But because of Zoom and its limited capacity to kind of do both, I eliminated the music and I only play it for Shavasana. Uh, yeah. Yes, so that's, that. yeah, that's a huge um, modification to my class style. 
Another one is I, oh man, a huge one is like hands-on adjustment. So when uh, students, you know, I see them right away and I can cue them obviously verbally. Um, the other one would be using my hands to like actually adjust their positioning or to, to help them find a deeper stretch. Mm-hmm. I can't do this virtually at all. Um, and for most people, it's like their cameras are in awkward positions. And, yep. you know, I can't even see their mat. <laughs> so it's, it's really tough it's that hard. way. Yeah. yeah, exactly. For them to like progress, it's like really um, more dependent on the student to do it. And it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. tough. Yeah, I know when like I attend your classes and like, okay, what's the best, <laughs> what's the best like angle for you to yeah. see me? And it's then you, sometimes you move up and you stand exactly. and you see my like waist down. Exactly. And then exactly. It's like, so it's like, you're always like, is it, you don't want to ruin your practice by like always shifting the camera. Yeah, no, pausing, oh, gosh, so no. it's funny. Yeah, it's super funny, but you yeah, know, it's, the best we can do and at least we can do it so (laughs) that's what I'm thankful for yeah Yeah. oh um and I know that earlier we were kind of chatting about how like physical and mental health tie in together Mm. can you kind of share a bit more of like how yoga ties in specifically with mental health oh yeah like yeah like everything (laughs) it's everything for me (laughs) yeah (laughs) yoga is like mostly mental for me I find it's like mental work they call it there's many like labels I find but you know they call it like inner work or um I mean some people could even say spiritual awakening things like that but I I all think it's it's mental mental work (laughs) because you're using your mind to do it only Mm -hmm. with the breath um there are like physical cues like you know trying to notice sensation and all that stuff and that's still working with your nervous system ultimately Mm -hmm. so your brain uh, basically meditation is um, a safe space for you to explore your mind it's like imagine your mind had like different libraries right and mm-hmm. when you're working or when you're studying or whatever or you're interacting with your friends you only use like from a couple of stacks of books right but what about the ones in the cobwebs in the back corner that you like you're like ah oh, I'll deal with that when I have time or later right yeah. or when you're lazy or something you're just like ah, I don't want to deal with it but yoga is a great time for you to like literally reach for that book oh yeah this time in my life when I was like 10 (laughs) you know and I and I had this kind of trauma like what what was that what did it mean how can I like take that experience and make myself a better person Mm -hmm. so that's it's all like inner work it's all that mental health work that um, I found the most benefit from yoga wow yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. because I guess it's a it's a combination of meditating and movement at the same time yeah yeah yoga yoga is the movement part but the meditating is more of the the mental work part right yeah Yeah. wow that's super cool it's super cool yeah yeah um and I know like from our previous episode I think we also chatted about how Mm -hmm. people who get certain treatments are like acupuncture and they have that emotional release oh yeah yeah and I guess like you can kind of experience that with yoga as well as yeah your, like, of course oh my gosh yeah. yeah so some of the deeper stretches like or even simple stretches like child's pose Ooh, okay. uh, or deeper right <laughs> yeah, yeah or a deeper stretch like the pigeon pose ah, things like yeah, that I think can that. really go deeper and um that's when you really have to focus on removing your ego from things, Mm -hmm. which means like the ego is a person is a voice in your mind. That's always telling you, Oh, Erica, you should do this better. Or, Oh, Erica, Mm -hmm. you should probably do that better. Uh, Kind of like judging you. Right. We always have that like angel and devil kind of um, advocate in our mind. So yoga is focused on removing that and trying to see it from a view of like neutral and Mm -hmm. um, yeah, non-judgment and just allowing things to uh, be assessed and processed in a way that's healthy (laughs) Mm -hmm. right that's actually productive right um yeah and that's I think where some people hit that kind of um emotion or story or trauma face to face when they go into those poses and they're like oh I didn't know that existed there before you know I, I didn't know like I didn't know I had this trauma from this time in my life before until like I just had this feeling. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely very powerful stuff if you practice it and um, are listening to your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess um, with the ego, because 
with people in their first time doing yoga, I feel yeah. like they could be frustrated of not being able 100%. to be flexible. So that's like also you're battling yeah. with your ego. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's well, all ego. It's actually yeah. all ego. You're right. Yeah. How, um, I guess like, cause you, you kind of shared in the beginning of like people who are starting out with yoga and it's just baby steps, I guess. And yeah. just like being kind to yourself as you're yeah. starting out too. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any other suggestions of say for example we're in a practice and you can't mm-hmm. really do a certain pose is mm-hmm. there like um so yeah, yeah a that's a really that. great question because yeah. um when I taught at the studio there was like different types of teachers right and right. one makes me different than Joe right and it's I found it was <laughs> actually it was mostly ego sometimes I found teachers teaching yoga to show different and cool poses which is great Mm -hmm. for me it was really about getting each participant student whatever to do their internal work that the class was happening in their mind and not like looking at other people like my ideal practice would be without a mirror because I don't think yeah I don't think the mirror actually reflects what a yoga class should be it should be working on what the four corners of your mat and what you're doing on it right yeah um yeah, so it was for so for beginners, of course, it's very difficult. Everything's new, <laughs> right? For people who don't like, you know, do stretching or workout, they're like, what is this? Like this person wants me to do like this downward dog thing. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. And that's totally fine. Um, yeah. it's not for everyone, but I do think everyone has a capability of doing it, just like how I think everyone can learn to dance. <laughs> I still think oh. everyone can learn to dance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that uh it gets easier of course the more you get used to the sequences and certain sun salutation and all this stuff and Mm -hmm. if I say like if I just say a pose name you probably might not know in the beginning but later on you'll you know identify it easier Mm -hmm. um but after you get all over all that frilly stuff I call it you can get into like the actual (laughs) work the actual work is in the mind (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. that's so funny are there like um top three yoga terms that like people should no, uh, no as they're learning uh, <laughs> hmm. namaste I guess could be one of them yeah namaste yeah. for sure um like verbal terms mm. yeah I guess well um I know in the beginning of the the year I showed yeah. my dad yoga okay. and he's he's like never he doesn't know what yeah what is that sure. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it's like sure. guys are I'm playing like yoga with Adrian videos. He's oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's namaste mean? And I I was like, let me Google it <laughs> really quick. <laughs> it's like I guess from your um perspective as a yoga teacher, like yeah. the top three words that you use often that people may or should kind of know, I guess. Ah, okay. Practice. Um I mean Shanti is a good one. Shanti oh, is peace, God. wishing peace to others, oh. wishing peace to all living things in the world. So not just humans, like animals, plants, trees, everything that's living. We all share the same energy and life force. Wow. Yeah. 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 I've heard you say that. I actually never yes. knew what it meant. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. And of course, the most important would be Om. Oh. So Om is, they say, is the first vibration of the universe. Um, it's kind of like a vibration that's shared again with all living things and when we share the same vibration, we're all kind of like elevated and we all are more, you know, better human beings, I think, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's yeah, beautiful. that's why I, I get my students to hopefully chant with me. But of course, some people are like, yo, you're weird. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. I don't care. I, yeah. I'll still do it sometimes if I feel that deep desire to do it (laughs) yeah of course it's better in person because I can hear them directly say it back to me in virtual it's like nah, hit and miss people are muted and Mm -hmm. you know stuff like that so yeah I know I I um I like hum it to myself but then I'm like oh yeah I am muted so it's like (laughs) oh it's it's such a different experience having virtual classes yeah for sure you feel connected but you're still alone yeah yeah Yeah. totally it's it's weird (laughs) yeah Yeah. um but I I try my best to make it like you don't feel alone right yeah Yeah. I know it's nice having like a a community to kind of do it with yeah I think I was I don't know if I shared in the last episode or maybe it was just with you and um 
it's like ha- now that everyone's kind of working from home it's mm-hmm. it's harder to um I guess like be active or be with other communities yeah. and stuff so yeah. scheduling in a yoga session is like okay cool I have it in my schedule yeah <laughs> you know, yeah have yeah in- making it a priority for yeah, sure yeah exactly for sure, for sure. Um, I think also something that I chatted with you a lot was, or said to you a lot was um, that I don't see a lot of people combining yoga and Cairo together. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you feel that there there's kind of like an advantage of having both expertise? Mm-hmm, and like, for sure. Yeah. So much. Oh my gosh, so much. Um, not to like brag for sure I'm not bragging but like in chiropractic college like there would be people that you know didn't have much experience doing anything else um like other than school I mean like yeah. they would just be like university and then straight to chiropractic but chiropractic is almost like it's like a road it's like a direction right it gives you a direction but to to where it's like up to you and so I feel like yoga gives me that direction of where I want to take chiropractic where I can see myself build more build more Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah I think the more people can connect to your story and to what you're doing and why you're doing things it has a bigger effect and um, for most people they're you know when they hear I'm a chiropractor they're like oh you fix backs you crack backs like yeah I do but I also like teach yoga and they're like oh that's like a different layer right and it's true you're right most people are like what does that mean (laughs) Uh, and so I'm like I feel like I have a different perspective that is a little bit different and can maybe help those people that are not sure about chiropractic or just Mm want to try yoga and that's cool too like I will still happily you know help you with that too Mm-hmm. do you feel that um you kind of have two different audiences I guess mm-hmm. that you're catering to like is it I know in the previous episode with the Cairo you kind of shared about who the type of uh, patients you treat yeah, is sure, it kind sure. of similar to your yoga uh <laughs> yoga people <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say before I had the vision of like teaching my yoga students and yoga students eventually you know wanting chiropractic right now I'm seeing it kind of reverse where I see chiropractic patients and I'm like oh you know you've always wanted to try yoga like come to my class and so it kind of is now just very fluid it can go both ways and the patient population could be it's pretty similar it's just people right (laughs) I don't think they're different in any way um Yeah. yeah I think I'm the same person as a chiropractor, as I am a yoga teacher. So they, you know, are attracted to that same energy and exactly. like, they're the same people anyways. That's true. Yeah. Um, I know that you were saying before as well that you do like Cairo for babies. Yeah. I do. Is there like, is there yoga for babies? Or uh, no? I wouldn't, wouldn't say yoga, different. but more like stretches, for massages. Babies. I actually yeah. teach that in my like parent and baby class. I did one for mommies and babies on Mother's Day, but like basically getting the mom to stretch, the baby to stretch, them to bond Mm -hmm. um, and do some like yoga together, which is, I think, important because other than breastfeeding and sleeping and eating, like that's their relationship at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. So to do something that's more meaningful is is better, too. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I'm like picturing (laughs) picturing the baby and the mom like doing it's super cute yeah definitely cute yeah when I'm like raise your hands over the head (laughs) Uh, um I did have um I know I'm just like firing all these questions at you sure but I I know like when we were doing our meditation practice together you kind of mentioned chakra yes I did and um I yeah I was kind of curious could you I hear people talking about chakras a lot and um Mm -hmm. what what does that mean and I guess like how could it, our chakras relate to our mental health as well? Hmm. Yeah, that's a really deep question. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> yeah, deep, very deep. <laughs> I think chakras, if if I were to explain it very simply, would be like dense areas of energy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, well, this is all with um with yoga. Like, so yoga has eight limbs. Well, it was like I have to go back. It has eight limbs, so it's like a tree. So there's eight different practices of yoga okay Um, and so chakras would be one of them Mm -hmm. where you kind of it's it's a philosophy it's like um 
you know, a principle to apply to yourself, to others and that kind of thing. But basically there's, I believe six of them just all aligned in the same area as your spine, I might say. <laughs> um, yeah, which is pretty cool because it kind of aligned that way. <laughs> and each one kind of represents a different emotion, a different organ, a different um, physical kind of manifestation. So they're important, say, if you want to, like you were saying, if you want to access to speak up more, you would um, focus your energy more on the throat, right? Right. So same thing with yoga. Like we also talk about the throat chakra and say, if you are speaking your truth, you would use your, your voice to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then say there's like the root chakra, which is like at the base of your spine. Mm -hmm. um, and that one is similar to chiropractic where the sacral nerves at the bottom of your spine are the strongest in terms of like um, controlling your nervous system. So like when you start doing poses for your sacrum, such as legs up a wall or yoga block under your, your, your um, sacrum for a bridge, it helps you calm down because they say this root chakra is responsible for um, security or insecurity or security issues, um, things like groundingness. So, so things like that. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Thanks, yeah, so Doris. there are definitely reasons for all the poses. It's just like you can't explain all of that in yoga. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I know like before you start your class too, um, you kind of ask everyone like, oh, are there any certain pain points that people yeah, are experiencing so we sure. can focus on that? Yeah, that, that's nice too, because it's like we can actually target of what's course. wrong of that's course yeah. On, right? yeah I mean I could do whatever for days but like I would prefer I'm teaching class for my students so yeah I want yeah. my students to have that feedback mm -hmm. immediately right yeah that's great because I've been to other yoga classes mm -hmm. I used to do hot yoga a lot too mm -hmm. but um they would you would just go to a class and they would just do like their oh yeah you know totally. what I mean like it, but they yeah. wouldn't really be asking you what kind yeah. of class you're looking for I guess right yeah, yeah. and yeah. I know some studios or places have like set sequences right so they literally right. teach the same sequence every time right. to me that's just like boring <laughs> <laughs> yeah to me like as a dancer is like the same choreography for yeah. you know every day it's like yeah. mind-numbing so for me that's why I like the flow because I can add in like different things here and there I can yeah. add more core work one day more leg work the other yeah yeah how do you come up with um what you want to do for that class? I guess like you just you just do it on the spot. You're like, oh, this is the feeling. You get the vibe. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, yeah. I, oh wow. I, yeah, I'm totally freestyling yeah. at this point. Yeah. Before I was like, ooh, more nervous, and like I'd have to write down my sequences or oh. say I want to uh, do a specific theme, like right. focusing on this chakra or focusing on this theme. Then that's when I would plan it. Mm -hmm. um but right now I'm just freestyling <laughs> that's cool that's so impressive I mean that like you're, you're a professional <laughs> so like yeah, it basically. makes you you know <laughs> exactly. that's funny but I don't tell anyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's like you're a pro so you know what yeah. you're doing and just because like it, it's like um uh, an, uh what's it called an analogy that I can think of is when you ask a piano player to like, mm -hmm. oh, can you play a song? And they oh, just yeah. go, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. and you're like, whoa, <laughs> like what? You're a pro. Like, and there's no sheet music that's in true, front yeah. of them. Like, yeah. that's exactly how, um, yeah, that comparison that's is. That's true. Like. It's a hundred percent true. And I yeah. think this is all like training and transferable skills from dancing. Cause like dancing, there's a huge freestyle component. Right. And there's like freestyle competitions, freestyle, whatever. Right. And and at one point I was even making chore choreography. Oh, but yeah. yeah, that kind of courage and that kind of like, eh, I trust myself. Nice. Was, like I carried that over. So yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, everything is kind of like is like interlacing with the, yes. in all your expertise. I guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So thank you so much, Joyce, for doing another episode with me and talking more about yoga I think I've always wanted to do a meditation in my yoga um in my um, podcast so it's yeah. awesome that you were able to lead and guide us with one anytime um, yeah especially on like yoga day it's cool to exactly. be talking about this um could you also share ways that we can support you and your business and, yes absolutely yeah. yeah so you can find me on instagram at 
as J Fu underscore chiropractic <laughs> or my um, LinkedIn is also Joyce Fu, Facebook, Dr. Joyce Fu website is jfu chiropractic so all yes. of these are all ways you can get in contact with me see what i'm doing mm -hmm. uh, see what new event i'm making um and how to keep in touch yeah and then i know um you also have a newsletter as well is that through your website yes so you can definitely sign up through my website okay. and uh that's how i would basically tell you what the new event to look forward to what right. i'm up to and that kind of thing and um, I guess like for people who want to also join your virtual classes, it would be through your website as well. And yes, yeah, totally. and booking yeah. Cairo appointments, all, one, all the links are all shop. there. Okay. You got, you yeah. got <laughs> awesome. Okay. I'll be yeah. linking all of Joyce's information in the podcast notes as well. I definitely recommend you trying out one of her yoga sessions. So you does uh, pay what you can with like yep. minimum ten dollar donation yep. right now exactly. and it's it's so worth it it's like you, it's a you, full class let me tell yeah, you I won't cheap out <laughs> you sweat a lot <laughs> like, oh, yeah but it's like you feel you feel like very relaxed after and zen yeah. out it's really it's well needed for sure but yeah exactly awesome yeah. <laughs> thank you so much Joyce it's it's so nice to have you on here um and thank yeah, you to thank you for having me and and so happy to talk about both chapters and both different things in my life that mean yeah. so much so thank you so much mm -hmm. yeah. thank you everyone listening bye bye <laughs>